Gloria Brooks here with Nature Glows eScience. Today I want to talk about how I went from rigid private school educator to a relaxed homeschool online course facilitator. Hi, I'm Gloria Brooks, founder of Nature Glows eScience, an online math art and natural science platform for kids ages 10 to 18, ideally younger kids that work beside older siblings well or alongside their parents do well in my courses as well. So it all started when I was eight years old. <laughs> These are the first, this is the first curriculum that I wrote combining math with marine biology. I was inspired by Jacques Cousteau's books. Uh, I would, I was raised by a single mom and on the weekends I would go to visit my grandparents' house and they had a collection of Jacques Cousteau's marine biology books. And I thumbed through them and I got inspiration for these books then. <laughs> so it seems to be written in my DNA that I, I write curriculum. But even that has evolved over time and, and changed. Um, but it just seemed like I've always had this uh, infatuation for connecting uh, academic subjects, even when I was eight years old. <laughs> and little story about this um, is I was in second grade and failing math class. My teacher, Mrs. Thompson, was uh, lecturing math, and she passed back to me my math worksheet covered in red X's. My response to that was to go home that weekend and create these little booklets. And here's, I think this is my favorite booklet, Little Jellyfish. And I wrote out these little math problems. I didn't show the booklets to her. I just did this on my own inclination. Um... And then I store it, store these three little booklets inside of this bank statement plastic. <laughs> so <clears throat> in seventh grade, uh, at age 14, I was adopted by a pastor and his wife, uh, Chuck and Doris Brooks. And um, my father was a pastor of a church, the Dover Plains Community Church. And I embraced Christianity readily. I accepted I remember praying to accept Jesus in my heart when I was in Sunday school. And uh, it was kind of a slow flame. It, uh, and what I mean by that is it wasn't like this major conversion experience immediately. But over the weeks and months after going to church, I um, experienced a transformation in my life, which was pretty miraculous. Um, I don't now embrace uh, any type of faith Right now, I'm just spiritual, um, but that's not what this story is about today. But I just wanted to clarify that. But I was uh, raised in a Christian family, beautiful Christian family. And uh, I went to Bible College, Maryland Bible College and Seminary in Baltimore, Maryland. And in seventh grade, I knew in my heart that I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, I graduated in 96 with a bachelor's in K-12 through Christian education and immediately went to work in my professor's school, uh, my professor, um, for privacy reasons. I won't name her name, but um, very influential. I'll call her Stacy. <laughs> Stacy opened a school for inner city kids, and I taught there for about, uh, I think it was September, October, November, December, January, February, um, and right away, I realized that the more hands-on education could be, the more experiential, the better. Um, so I had the kids, like, dissecting a fish, and we went outdoors to do math and jumped around in the, in the stream where I got poison ivy. Unfortunately, it covered my face that fall. It was awful. Uh, thankfully, we had a doctor in the church who prescribed antibiotics to get rid of the... Um, poison ivy infection, but it was pretty awful. I was like turning into an elephant woman. <laughs> so um, unfortunately, um, that first year was really rough for me. Uh, the kids were tough for me. They um, were underprivileged youth and some of them had some pretty rough backgrounds and I just was not able to successfully manage my classes in the long run. So I ended up leaving early that year on account of that. Uh, got a job the following year at a small private school of about 200 kids called Evangel Christian Academy near White Marsh, Maryland, and had a renaissance year there. 
Um, and one day at the back of church, my professor, Stacy, um, who opened the inner city school, shared a story about a diamond named Cody, an animated diamond. And there were illustrations of this diamond. She didn't show the illustrations that day. But the way she told the story was the process that the diamond went through to transform and to become from a piece of coal to a diamond and the adventures that Cody went on uh, through a river lava, a lava river and exploding through a volcano and finally becoming a crown jewel. And I was so inspired by the retelling of that story that I decided right then and there that I was going to write similar stories. So I started creating stories integrating biblical teachings with science and language arts. And I, my very first story was called Margaret the Oyster Pearl. And I shared that with my students, the first grade students that I was the teacher's aide for, in which I was teaching their Bible class. And the kids absolutely loved the stories. And I would have them retell the stories, um, like uh, summarize them, write their own creative narratives, uh, draw pictures. We would sing songs. And it was just a really creative renaissance period in, early on in my education career. Um, long story short, I went back to the Baltimore Academy of Excellence, um, my professor Stacy's um, school, and uh, they had a new principal. She was still vice principal there. Um, but they used the ACE program, which I found out very quickly, even though I used it when I was in Christian school and I did well with it. I skipped two grades. I found that I did not enjoy administering the ACE program. It was very dull and boring. There was just no creativity. I found myself running around answering student questions and just not really creatively engaged um, in the program. Uh, very boring and I burned out. So that was my third year of teaching. Um, and then in 1999, um, I gave up working at the school and I became a waitress at the Olive Garden. And at the Olive Garden, there was a woman there from my church named Diane. And her husband was opening a school in Newark, Delaware called Heritage Christian Academy, a principal approach school. So I expressed interest and they had me come up and visit uh, and help out with the new school. And it was determined by the head pastor of the church there Pastor Wissett, that they would hire me on as their first, I think it was um, second, third, and fourth grades that first year. So I had 15 students crammed into this little tiny classroom. <laughs> I'm surprised we got away with it. Like we broke fire codes for sure. Wall to wall kids. Um, and I was using what's called the principal approach, where you teach biblical principles and you tie in the academic subjects. And you teach critical thinking. It was a very rich program and it allowed me to write curriculum. Um, unfortunately, I, I did get burned out after the seventh year of, of that program. Um, the reason being was I was tired of lecture style education. Uh, I was tired of seeing my kids long faces. I hated teaching traditional math. Um, I was using, we were using the right start math. In fact, I didn't like it so much that I passed it on to another teacher. Um, but just as I was, I was really near throwing in the towel with teaching. I was just so uh, discontented with tr the traditional education model of kids sitting in their seats, you know, six hours a day with me lecture styling, divided subjects, tired of grading, tired of testing, just was thinking of a new career. And then we had a man come to our school to do some seminars named Don Tolman. And Don Tolman is a really brilliant and very much out of the box uh, educator, inspirational speaker. And he taught us about eating from nature's table, but also teaching living math, uh, looking for nature's numbers, patterns, and geometric shapes looking at the golden ratio, 1.618, which is a proportion of beauty found in ancient temples and architecture since antiquity, such as the Parthenon, which is found within 
the beauty, beautiful proportions of the golden ratio, 1.618. Starting from the second to the last step, you can put a golden rectangle around the Parthenon. Um, and also the Fibonacci numbers, which, um, and I should back up. I forgot one part in the story, which is so key. Um, back up to the year after I graduated from Bible college, around the same time that Stacy told her story at the back of the church of Cody the Diamond. That summer, our church had a, a missionary convention, and they would have thousands of missionaries come home from uh, various places around the world, and they would set up booths. And one pastor, I think it was Pastor Mati, Pastor Mati, Anyway, he had a book sale going on and I walked in and I picked up a time life book called mathematics and mathematics had always been a dry, boring subject to me in school. It was just something that I had to do to get it done and over with to move on to other things that I enjoyed in academics more readily. So I picked up this old tattered blue hardback time life and I thumbed through it, and what I saw totally changed my relationship with mathematics for the rest of my life. Um, here I was introduced for the first time, and this was the summer of 1997, the year after I graduated from Bible college. Here I was introduced to the idea of mathematics found in art, architecture, and the natural world. There was a beautiful picture of a chambered nautilus cross-section shell exhibiting the golden well, the logarithmic or growth spiral. Um, I was introduced to the Fibonacci number series. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I was just totally floored and enthralled by the relationship of mathematics with the real world all around us. So I bought the book. It was like 50 cents or a dollar. And I wanted to research, do some deep dive research in local libraries and see if I could find other books just like it. I found a few books and I also found a few more books at some thrift stores. I think all in all, maybe I found five or 10 books, um, but it, it just wasn't enough for my insatiable desire to study maths in the real world. So I gave up the search. Um, interestingly enough, I didn't really incorporate it, any of it in my teachings. I didn't know how yet because I was so lockstep with teaching traditional math. Um, I just didn't know or understand how to even deviate from a traditional math curriculum yet. So now fast forward to when Don Tolman came to our school to do seminars. So he taught, um, he reopened the living maths for me that I had been introduced to in the time life back, back in 1997. So this is 2003. Uh, quite a few years later since I was first introduced to living maths. Um, so what happened is I became re-inspired to do deep dive research. This time the internet was underway and I went online and I literally downloaded 20 thick three ring uh, binder volumes of information about um, the golden ratio, Fibonacci numbers, math history, um, math found in numbers of petals on flowers um, to fractals. And I just filled, filled volumes quite literally. And then what happened next was I, every day after school, I would, uh, I had a bag packed, a book bag or a backpack packed and ready to go, complete with a journal, my camera, a snack, water, and I would head to local nature centers and various local hiking trails around my area. I lived in Elkton, Maryland at the time. And I just had this incredible epiphany. It was just this, it was another, this was like my second renaissance in education. And it was just a rich and deep experience. And I was out in the forest and I was looking for nature's numbers, patterns, and geometric shapes, and my eyes were just opened. Also at that time, I was um, eating lots of raw food. I was about 90% raw, um, and I was doing intermittent fasting, so I was detoxing and really clearing my mind, so I just had such a clear mind to really, um, really hear from 
from God or spirit, the all in all. And I just felt so alive and so on fire. And I started to bring this fire into the classroom, this excitement, this like this aliveness and my kids, my students picked up on this and I started introducing them to nature's numbers and geometric shapes. Um, now at first it was embraced, but then some parents became alarmed because I was starting to spend more time outdoors with the kids than indoors. So it caught parents' attention and, um, the principal told me I needed to slow down and <laughs> not, uh, shock the family so much. So I did dial it back. Um, but I was just so excited. I wanted to be outdoors with the kids every single day. And I felt so restricted. Um, the principal did give me permission to create a course that I taught to elementary and middle school called math lab. And that was the beginning of what I have now created online, which is called math art, where we look at nature's numbers patterns and geometric shapes along with studying math history and math's connection through art sciences ancient cultures very rich curriculum um, including which I think is the backbone mathematics history studying math history with math is it just makes it come alive so much more uh, humans learn through story and you know, when you're teaching math through a story, it just brings it alive for kids. Humans have been telling stories, sharing testimonies with each other since the dawn of humanity. So it only goes to show that a good, rich story uh, can bring a subject alive, such as math. Teaching math history brings math alive. And that's what I do in math art. By the way, click on the link with this post and you can grab my math learning secrets guide today. Grab it while the price is this low. Not sure how much longer that will uh, uh, that will last. Also, as an optional add-on, you can get my Geometric Beauty of Snowflakes online three-part course. Um, ideally for kids 10 to 18, but younger kids that can work well with older siblings or alongside their parents do well in that course as well. But the Math Learning Secrets Guide is for pre-K to 12th grade. Um, so grab your guide today while it's available. Click the link now. All right. Um, so I want to continue my story. Um, I, the school ended up closing in 2006, Heritage Christian Academy. Um, and I ended up moving on to yet another Christian school called Elkton Christian Academy. And I was feeling very restless, um, very restricted, traditional education model, teaching to the test, well, not really teach. Yeah, I was teaching to the test. Divided subjects, lecture style. And I started to break out of that mold. Uh, my principal, Mrs. Linda Barton, who was very kind to me, very understanding, um, saw my creative spirit and gave me liberty to visit other tr um, non-traditional progressive education schools. I visited the Jefferson School in Georgetown, Delaware. I visited free schools, uh, the Newark Free School. I visited a Montessori school and I started to adopt their progressive methods in my classroom. Thankfully, it was embraced. Um, although I did feel that I was under too much of the watchful eye constantly with leadership um, and I, I felt restricted. Uh, I ended up losing, not losing, but leaving that school for another job uh, with special needs kids in middle and high school called the Elijah School in Rising Sun, Maryland. Unfortunately, that school closed down years ago. It's no longer in existence, but I spent a year and a half there. Um, again, I was just really uh, tired of lecture style teaching. So I ended up losing my job there, which ended up being a gift. And I went and moved to an intentional community. I'd been researching intentional communities, uh, communities that live sustainably. Um, they co -op they live in cooperation. They make decisions together. Uh, Heathcote Intentional Community makes decisions by consensus. Um, there was a homeschool program there called Open Classroom, read, led by a woman named Dana, and she invited me to apprentice 
So I apprenticed there for four and a half months. An absolute dream come true. It was just perfect, just exactly what I was looking for in education. A democratic model, which means the kids have a voice and a say and get to direct their learning. And teachers are there as facilitators offering the resources, which is what I do online. Um, Each of my lessons is guided by a short PowerPoint lesson, but then I give uh, projects and activities and different options for students to choose how they want to further learn about a particular lesson all online. So my eyes were opened with the open classroom program. Here I became first an observer. I de-schooled. Uh, There were no grades, tests, divided subjects. The kids were led by their learning curiosity and passions. And Dana had a well-stocked learning center so that the kids had plenty of resources to choose choose for their learning. So what did they choose to do? Uh, Arts and crafts, board games, playing outside for hours at a time, hiking around the 112 acres of wooded land, playing pretend, um, acting, storytelling, just a rich program. So I ended up taking over the program the following year and creating Heathcote Art and Science Center, HASC for short. And I served 16 homeschoolers that year. Uh, But there was a core group of four or five students that came to the HASC program. They were the residential homeschool students. And that was probably the most exciting, richest opportunity I've ever had in my whole life. Um, You know, like I said, it was just an absolutely gorgeous rural setting on 112 acres of wooded land nestled in a valley. Our learning center was in a three-story old grain mill renovated. We were on the second floor, wood floors. Um, I don't know what the walls were made of, but they were really thick like a thick concrete, Um, quite cool in the summer. Um, But I ran the program from September of 2010 right into May of 2011. Uh, We met three three days a week for four-hour stints, and I absolutely loaded up the learning center with math, art, and science resources, just like the program's name, Heathcote Art and Science Center. So I brought in my microscopes, I brought in like spirograph, board games, uh, beautiful storybooks and picture books about math and science. So math and science was what spearheaded the learning along with the natural resources of the land um, was what I interwove together in the program. So what did the kids do? They did science experiments. We had mad scientists did it, mad scientists days where we did one experiment, for example, where we were testing the alkalinity using various fruits and vegetables, cabbage. We were um, measuring the alkalinity in cabbage juice, I recall. I had a series of cups lined up and the kids were putting litmus papers in them and testing acidity and alkalinity. Uh, We did art projects. We made paper We would uh, blend up construction paper, different colors, and then we had these, um, they call them decals, and like it was a screen, and I hot glue gunned the screen to uh, four wooden, um, wooden poles, and then we would dip the screen in the paper mash and let it dry, and then they would have these really pretty pieces of paper that they could draw on and color on. We played board games, we played hide and seek, we built forts, we did aquatic hikes, um, we fed the birds, we did bird watching. Um, It was just a rich and glorious program. Uh, Unfortunately, Heathcote Art and Science Center did come to an end. There were, there was one community member that really did not want the program. Um, They, she just did not want kids around all the time kind of a crusty grump. (laughs) So I ended up moving my program online to what it is today, uh, Nature Glows eScience. So go ahead and click the link and grab Math Learning Secrets and I teach you my five pillars, Math Learning Secrets Helping to Liberate You from Math Academic Drudgery. 
through fun and real life connections, just like um, I've learned over the years. So this has been quite an evolution of transformation in my life from the year I graduated from college in 1996, all the way to now where I have become a relaxed, uh, I guess I would say I'm a relaxed, eclectic, unit study, unschool, <laughs> um, game schooling, online teacher facilitator. <laughs> so I'm trying to think if I've left anything out. So yes, so I started teaching online in 2010, uh, the same year that I started the Hask program, Heathcote Art and Science Center. So when Heathcote Art and Science Center closed, um, I was te completely teaching all of my courses online. I was developing marine biology, birds, botany courses, nature connection, um, math art, mammals, animal physics. Um, I developed a wildflowers course. Um, I taught some special courses in the summer, like shortened versions of marine biology, mammals, math art. Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely loved and adored teaching online. And that was a whole learning curve as well. Learning how to um, not always be the one speaking, but giving the students a voice and a floor to ask questions, to make comments. Um, I started off pretty rigid even when I was teaching online and learned how to relax more and more, relax more and more and more. Now all of my courses are pre-recorded. Um, I did all the recordings back in 2017 with real students uh, when I was teaching live online classes. Now I don't offer live online classes because I'm literally a one woman band. I'm doing all the marketing. Um, it's, I just can't do live classes and maintain um, the business as well. All right, well, thank you for hearing my story from rigid private school educator to relaxed online homeschool course facilitator for math and the natural sciences. Uh, if you haven't done so already, click the link to my Math Learning Secrets e-guide. It's a 40-page um, guide teaching you how to liberate yourself from math, academic drudgery through fun and real-life connections. Also with math's partner, science. Science, uh, math is the language of science. So I believe that teaching math and science together, you can end up teaching the rest of the academics in a rich way. So grab that and I will teach you how to do that. Um, click the link and get Math Learning Secrets today while the price is that low. And also along with that, click the add-on for Geometric Beauty of Snowflakes while it is in season. I will soon be shelving that since uh, winter is soon to be over. Spring is like in about a month. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Signing off here, Gloria Brooks, founder of